Time for the news. 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 Do, 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 do. News. Yeah. Um, box office updates. Oh, yes. Kind of got into making a bit of a thing of this now, so it's always interesting. Yeah. Uh, June part two, absolutely smashing it still. $667 million. Nice. Worldwide. Godzilla. It's good it's enough. Tape it off a little bit, three hundred and sixty-six million dollars, but still smashing it. As the reason op- I am, yeah. is- say again. Has it opened in Japan yet, though? Because it hadn't uh, last week. I don't know. Because that's got to be a big earner oh, waiting to happen. Follow up question. Sorry, sorry, I forgot the rules. All pre- prep me first. <laughs> don't don't uh, probe don't beneath the surface. <laughs> I don't know is the answer. <laughs> okay. Um, fine. The re- actually the reason actual reason why I'm mentioning box office takings because I was having a look at it today and I was like probably not newsworthy, but the Film that is at number two this year so far. Mm. Are we f- nearly four months in. So the film that is currently sitting at number two for global box office takings. Would you care to guess what it is? Number two box office takings for this year. Not the two that you just mentioned. No. What else has come out this year? Oh, uh, no, I'm drawing a blank. Okay. It's... With four hundred and eleven million dollars against a budget of eighty million dollars. Oh. The current number two for global box office takings for two thousand and twenty four. I feel like should be a drum roll for this. Kung Fu Panda Four. Do you know what I was gonna say? Kung Fu Panda Four. I thought no, that would be stupid. That would literally be Kung stupid. Fu Panda Four. Oh, wish I'd said it now. Bloody hell. My God, I, I'm not knocking, like, clearly, whatever, you know, well, but mad, absolutely must, mad. Must have been an Easter holiday sensation. I guess it must have been. I guess Just it must have been. came at the right time. Well. Unless they were yeah. giving tickets away in, like, packets of cereal or something, I don't know. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, that's $20, actually. Yeah, it's another $20. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> yeah. The mind it boggles. A full price ticket. Mind well, fair play. play. Um, Jack, yeah, Jack play Black too. was right to do the third sequel. Yeah. Oh, mad. I mean, there's a few other big names in it, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. not just Jack Black. But anyway, well played to that. Well played to that. Um, in Star Wars related news. Yes. Star Wars Dawn of the Jedi. Yep. Which we've spoken about a fair amount and we are very excited about, despite the fact that we still don't know when it's coming. No. And this news would suggest that it's still quite a fair, far way off oh. because they've just employed a writer. Oh. So, that sounds screen, quite early on. <laughs> a screenwriter. <laughs> so it's um, it's not exactly around the corner. Let's put it that way. Is so that, James, do we know if that's still a working title or they said that's the official title? Because it mm, feels like a work in progress title. Though. Possibly. Possibly. Let's, we're going to, until we get other information, we'll go with Dawn of the Jedi. Okay. Um, we obviously know as well that I think with James Mangold, who's directing, is not going to start working on that until he's finished the uh, Mando Grogu film. Yeah. We believe. That's going to be uh, the first one that comes out, isn't it? Indeed. Indeed. So that's a way off. But is... getting back to Dawn of the Jedi, the writer that's been hired is a guy called Bo Willimon, mm-hmm. uh, who most notably has written large chunks of House of Cards. Okay. Uh, and a series called The First, which is about a group of people who went to Mars, the first people who colonized Mars. Yeah, that sounds familiar. I've not seen House of Cards, but I've heard a lot of good stuff about it. Yeah, same. Mm -hmm. So that bodes well. What also bodes well is he was responsible for writing three episodes of Andor. Uh, And I have to say, not just any three episodes... He wrote episodes eight, nine, and ten, which were all the ones based around the prison. Right. Yeah. So the one Good. I think the episodes are called Narkina Five, and the one where it's called Nobody's Listening and One Way Out. Oh, okay. So, to my mind, at least three particularly standout episodes from that series. So yeah. If he's any, if that's anything to go by, hopefully, hopefully we're in safe hands. Yeah. Sounds like it. Sounds like it. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. As we speak, as we speak on the night of recording this podcast, the BAFTA Games Awards are taking place. Lovely. 
Lovely, lovely. Now, I know sod all about this, um, but apparently the big games on tonight's list in terms of what's expected to do well are Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, yeah. And Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Oh, okay. Okay. They've, mm. I think, uh, they've respectively got 10 and 9 nominations each. I mean, I did try so, a demo of that Baldur's Gate, but I couldn't get on with it. Oh, it wouldn't win with you then, would it? No. Wouldn't win with you. No prizes from me. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. It's also nominated in six categories. Finished it, mate. Finished it, mate. So we'll Cleared. give you some new. Hopefully that'll do well. We'll bring you some news next week on that. Yeah. And lovely. you can tell us all about the categories it hopefully wins in and why you think it's one in those categories. I better do some research. I you better. <laughs> you better. better. I will. I'm sorry. I didn't even know they were on um, tonight. So. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, it might be it might be that they've been announced already and we should actually report on it. Could do live, live reporting. We're not going to do oh, that. Ain't got imagine. time. Ain't got no. time. Um, on the subject of computer games. Yes. Fallout. Fallout series has come out today as well. It has, yeah. Brand now, new you series. You know more about Fallout than I do. Because that I name do. means nothing to me. Oh, it was, it's a very it's a popular series of games. Is it? You understand what? I understand it's a what? post-apocalyptic LA. It, well, yeah. I mean, it's the, the games are set in multiple different places. One of them was set in Las Vegas. So, yeah, they're all over. So I'm not sure about the TV series, but the, the games are. But, yeah, it's always the same theme. It's about 200 years after some nuclear annihilation uh, where people have been hiding in vaults under the ground and then they've waited until the radiation levels have kind of dissipated to livable standards and then the, they emerge from these vaults and uh, try to, you know, get on with life. But in the meantime, nature's mutated and there's all sorts of nasty things going on. It's a, they're role-playing games. So it's a bit like Skyrim. It, I know you probably don't know what that is either but like um you have you have missions and quests <laughs> it's <a bit> like, <laughs> um something else you've not heard of yeah this thing that you don't know is like some other thing that you don't know uh but right. they're no, they're great games i love i love the fallout games uh so i'm excited for the tv show uh, and apparently it's pretty good i've seen some initial reviews that that say it's 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 worth a watch so i'll be checking that out good good Full show. Um, well we're, we're very aware of the history of computer games being converted into motion pictures and series yeah. and that kind of stuff. What do we yeah. think about board games being converted into board movies? Games. Well, like Jumanji. Yeah, that kind of thing. Well, <laughs> well, so apparently, so apparently, uh, Margot Robbie's got a production company and apparently they're going to do a movie that's based upon Monopoly. Oh, do you know when you said board games, I I did initially think of Monopoly, but I can't, I couldn't think how that could be a movie. Yeah, and if can I? Hopefully they can. Just driving it's... around buying stuff and charging yeah. your mates money, and then a bit after three hours, someone getting pissed off and flipping the board over. I've bought a hotel. I've rent. Oh, I haven't charged enough rent. Oh shit! Yeah. No. <laughs> I own Sounds this like street. it's gonna be great oh, watching. Oh, no. I've got to go to jail. Oh. Exactly. Well, let's see. Hopefully they we'll see. They've thought this through. Let's hopefully they've thought this through. On a slightly more exciting, something that excites me more than a film about Monopoly, quite frankly, is a Joker, Folie à deux. Oui. Or is it called? Is that Madness of Two or something? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why not? If you speak French, let us know. Uh, trailers dropped for that, and looks. I mean, as we always do with trailers, it looks lovely. Let's wait and see, shall we? Is this a direct sequel to the uh, Joaquin Phoenix one? Yeah, basically. Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga play the leads. Okay. Uh, Lady Gaga is going to be Harley Quinn. Yeah. Um, I'd be surprised if she was Batman. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> who knows? There, will there be a Bruce Wayne in it? There's a few. Well. There's a few characters that could potentially be Bruce Wayne, but we don't know. We don't know yet. Uh, but yeah, Joaquin Phoenix. He looks based upon the trailer, at least. He he's looking every bit as mad as he did in the first one, uh, but slightly more sinister, should we say? Because he was more quite sinister. 
Yeah, I'm thinking the first one. He was. I was, I was going to say he was quite sweet, but I don't think that's right, is it? <laughs> He's. It's creepy. You know what I mean? Hell. He was. He was creepy, but he was kind of from a perspective of. He wasn't. Well, they try to be build some empathy with him. Weren't they, yeah, exactly. You could you could see there was a soft side to him where he basically yeah. he was he was quite vulnerable. I thought in the first one. Yeah, and um, he he had he's got the condition where he laughs uncontrollably, and it's yeah, wasn't it? So it's Which trying to ter- explain in itself. Was, yeah, but yeah, trying to sort of explain the madness a bit. But yeah, I mean, I I seem to be in the minority of people who didn't think that film was as good as everyone else. You're. Not in the minority, I don't think. I think that film, it got the classic sort of arty response. Where it's, oh, it's mm. so different. It's so good. It's whatever else. And I, don't get me yeah. wrong. I didn't think it was a bad film. I didn't no, think no, it was a bad film. Bad. I definitely felt like it dragged its heels in places. Yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, no point really sort of created a character that I was particularly scared of or anything like that. Mm. Don't be wrong. I'm not about to invite him around for dinner, but no, it was a uh, yeah. I don't know. It was it was good, but not. It know. was different, but that doesn't automatically make it good. Quite, quite. But that's my we'll view. See. We shall see what the sequel brings us. Yeah. Um. And you know, hopefully, hopefully it'll be good. We've got. <laughs> I need, to, I need to talk about Christopher Nolan again. Oh, what a surprise! <laughs> no, no, no. What did he have for breakfast this morning? I don't know. I don't know. This is no. Oh. This is actually a. This is this is a serious talking point. Actually, oh it's right, quite okay. serious, right? So, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the and to listeners outside of the UK, this may mean absolutely nothing to you. Um, for listeners outside the UK, I'll explain. The current current government in this country is is the Conservative the Party. Well, oh. yeah, no, that's, I mean, I, I wasn't going to mention that. I've kind of assumed oh, okay. that's a given at this point. Stay neutral. Um, anyway, they released a, a promo video this week. And I will, for context, I'll put in the, their recent history of releasing promotional content is fucking awful. <laughs> in fact, a few weeks ago, they had to retract one of their pieces because they were trying to portray London as both, basically a war zone. Uh, and oh, a crime, a crime hotspot, um, and a no-go area for people who, despite the fact that anyone who goes to London regularly knows, it's absolutely fine. Come, spend your money, please, please do. Yes. Um, uh, and the scene they depict, they had to re- retract it because what they actually showed was crime being committed in a New York subway station. Yeah, yeah and no one, no one had vetted it. They're like, that's not a London tube station. Like, oh no! Oh, was that shit. the Conservatives put that out? Didn't yeah, they? yeah. Oh god! Yeah, I just assumed that was some. <laughs> these like... are these are the people that run our country. Oh man, that's shocking. Anyway, anyway, that's by the by. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that's their recent history. So you'd have thought on the back of that they'd be like really tight on stuff. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, they brought out another one this week. Oh yeah, uh, right. and basically featured loads of things where they didn't ask anyone's permission <laughs> to, to do anything. Um, Basically, trying to portray how great Britain was. Right. Bear in mind. Bear in mind. They are the government. They're not the government of England. They're the government of Britain. Yes. Uh, so they brought out a thing where it was the England football team. Yeah. Was largely featured in it. Uh, by the way, only men were featured in this this promotional thing oh, about how dear. great Britain was. It's like that's a <laughs> bit of an own goal. Like no pun intended. But come on. Just come on. Have a look around, mate. There's some women who are quite good, you know. They're all right. Well, it's like not, the women's football like team the, for a start. <laughs> the ones have actually won something. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that was that. But anyway, the reason I get to it, so Christopher Nolan was always fe- also featured in this. Basically, they depict, they used his image. Are they also, <laughs> this? one of the reasons they've had to retract this one is because they used the Im- an image of King Charles. For anyone who's not aware, the royal family are, strictly speaking, politically neutral. Yeah. They don't get involved and they are not their image is not allowed to be used in political campaigning yeah someone right. apparently the people who run this country don't know that wow anyway so they've obviously used his image without asking they also use christopher nolan to demonstrate how great some things in britain are okay you'll get no argument from me probably the greatest director on the planet in my opinion probably. at the moment other than depending on what you want to watch really 
other than, <laughs> other than yeah, no, he is. Um, <laughs> anyway, anyway, like I say, chances are he did not consent to his image being used in this. Oh, but that's crazy. But but I was going to say what I was going to say is if he had, even if he had, like you know, I might question his decisions in life at that point. <laughs> but does it, it when directors? If directors are to get involved in politics and stuff, do we think it's like how much of their movie making do we think is actually affected by that? Because, and does it matter? Because I think George Lucas, obviously George Lucas, we know full well, Star Wars is very anti-establishment. Yes, pro. Of course. Fr- let's call them freedom fighters in this instance. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice way of putting it. Commonly speaking, like let's be clear, they'd be called terrorists. Yes, if they were. The rebels would be terrorists if they were in modern parlances. Exactly. Um, but when I think of someone like Christopher Nolan, I mean, I, until I until I saw these articles, I didn't really think of Christopher Nolan as particularly politically motivated in his movie making. Hmm. Is there anything like? Is, have you ever thinking thought, now? Have you ever thought of that? But this is the thing. Like I didn't. I then got thinking about like if almost every single one of his his films is a singular male lead who's kind of almost all of them revolve around a male lead doing the wrong thing for the right reasons. Yeah, no, I'd go with that. that. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I've I've never thought of his films like you say either as politically no. motivated. No. And you know, there's going to be probably undertones, or you can oh, draw comparisons if you look hard enough. Yeah, but yeah, well, on the whole, find whatever you want if you're looking for it, can't you? Yeah, exactly. But yeah. I'd I'd agree. I'd say on the whole, his films were yeah, kind of the yeah the 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 outlaw hmm. with the heart of gold or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, kind of. But also as well, there's like I guess there are instances where he does. He highlights, I think he kind of he seemingly promotes the things, but then also he, he gets the movie to hold things to account as well. Like there's always, there's always, I think, the balance there with, like if you think of uh, two, two examples I'd use, like say Inception, where you've got Leonardo DiCaprio's character who is clearly getting to the point where he's going too far. Yeah. And you've got his mate who is played by, I can't remember his name. Either way, he's right hand man. Joseph, the Joseph Gordon Joseph Levitt. Levitt. Okay. Levitt. Levitt. Like that. That's the guy. Yeah, he's he's like he's he's counter but he's yeah he counter that and he's like you you this is wrong, you can't do this, you've gone too far and all that. Yeah, yeah. There's a voice of reason character, exactly. isn't there? Exactly. And I think yeah. in Batman, one of the key scenes in The Dark Knight is when he does he uses that technology to track down the Joker. Yes. And, Lucius Fox, Morgan Freeman's character, yeah. like, wants nothing to do with it. This is wrong. Yeah, you he resigns, do doesn't he? He does resign. He does resign, but he kind of helps Bruce out because, you know, it's like, well, okay, it's time. One, one last favour. Yeah. I'll do it for you. And I'm done. But then, obviously, we get the... He puts in his password. Everything goes. Yeah. His name. So, yeah, I think there's... I think, I think yeah, because of, because of that stuff that's come out this week, there has been chat about Christopher Nolan and whether he is let's say right leaning and all that kind of stuff. But I do think not, you know, I'm sure he's, he's capable of answering his, that question himself, but I do think most mm. of the films, even when they promote an idea, there is someone there to balance it out, balance it out and present the opposing argument to it. Yeah. So, yes. I mean, I, I don't, I don't think you can just be binary and say, oh, this director's left wing, this director's no. right. You know, there's, there's obviously so much nuance in that and, Quite a million shades of grey between black and white, um, but uh, yeah, I'd be very surprised if he'd given his uh, go ahead to to have his image used in a conservative party, particularly this one promotion video. <laughs> yeah, the current current version of it. Like, uh, I'm doing quite well actually. I don't need to be associated with you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Also, yeah. did I mention that I live in LA? So <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Anyone who is successful from this country will tend to end up in America at some point. Yeah. Won't they? There's a reason I don't live in London anymore. Yeah. It's run by you bastards. Anyway, <laughs> no, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. And neither no. am I saying that. Anyway, 
Anyway, that's all the newsy stuff we've got for this week. We're going to come back after the break where we will once again, once again, once again, once again well, are you can ask me if I've got any news. Oh, yeah. Anyway, we'll come back in a bit. <laughs> no, have you got any news? What you got? What you got for? I actually have news this week. It's like the one yes. time. Yes. It's, and it's back to video games, of course. Oh. Yes, I know. I probably should have mentioned it earlier when we were talking about video games. But anyway, we've mentioned uh, the, the Star Wars Outlaws game a couple of times. Mentioned it when we had Baz on the show, um, and I talked about it before when it was first announced. Yes. That is due out this year. Uh, and this week, uh, a new trailer dropped for it, uh, which they call the story trailer, which means there's no actual uh, in-game footage. It's just kind of cinematics, essentially. Uh, but but what that's told us definitively is that this game is set between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi um, because there are scenes where the main character, whose name I've forgotten, you see her in Jabba's palace talking to Jabba the Hutt and on the wall is our good friend Han Solo in <gasps> Carbonite. So it's 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 set in that era and she's, uh, an, well, as the title suggests, an outlaw. So it's all about crime syndicates and um, that sort of third party of star wars universe as in mm. not light side dark side but you know just people villains. trying to get by yeah exactly uh so that's very exciting and now we have a definitive release date as well which is august the 30th so well, that is uh that's been set in stone no doubt we'll probably slip but for now that's the the release date that's, <laughs> no that's doubt what happens miss that, the yeah they always do because they overwork the poor coders until they literally drop dead. What do you um, mean you can't? You can only code for eight hours straight a day. Yeah, before you go blind. With that. Ridiculous. Um, and but you can pre-order it now. So if you want to give away a hundred pounds to Ubisoft now, then you can. You can so do that. On. So basically, what you're doing is you're taking the money from your bank account, putting it in their bank account for five months. Yes, or four months. Where are you? Four months. Yeah. Let them um, earn the interest on it. When you could just buy it on the day. Ah, but you get bonuses for pre-ordering. Such as? Uh, a, a, a costume. Do you not, actually? Not a real-life costume. <laughs> a different costume for your character to wear that you can only get if you pre-order. God, there'll be... <laughs> you know now they've already they've already sold like a million copies. Oh, yeah. Well, I think, yeah, they, they sort of develop as much of the game as they can until they run out of money. Then they're like, oh, go on, pre-order it. And yeah. So we can finish it because we, we've run out of cash. Oh. So, but any case, I will not be pre-ordering because I don't believe in doing that for a video game. Um, but but it does look good. It looks interesting. I think if they pull it off, it could be a, a, a tidy little game. So we'll keep an eye on that and report back nearer the time. Good, good, good. good. Okay, right. Well, now we're going to go to our second chart cinema club. Yes, it's lovely to hear that about. What was it called again? Outlaws. 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 It's the one where, is it off-world, open-world? Yeah, game. apparently. You can jump in how, a jet. How, how open-world it is remains to be seen, but yeah, it looks like you can, you can yeah, go hopping off, visiting different planets, willy-nilly. Willy-nilly. Well, we'll find out, find out August 30th or some day thereafter, maybe. Yeah. Okay, brilliant.